Hey, what's up guys? So this is going to be part two of my beginner blacksmith forging a knife video series. Uh, <clears throat> those of you that saw the first one, this is basically where we left off. This is my knife that I forged out of 5160. Um, it's basically ready for profiling and a little bit of cleaning up. Um, after this cooled down and later on I got a chance to actually look at it, um, I realized I left this a lot rougher than I um, had planned to. And you can see, you know, this profile here on the back of the handle, kind of rough. So that means I'm going to have to, you know, grind that smooth, take a little bit more out of that maybe than I wanted to. Um, same thing here on the blade. I have some pretty heavy hammer marks here, which shouldn't matter too much because, you know, I'm, I'm only going to grind, you know, the bottom portion of this blade. I'm just going to leave the back pretty much raw. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, hand sand that or anything. I'll clean up the profile on both sides and then, you know, I'll put in the bevels and then this top portion I'll just leave raw. Um, that's gonna be for this one, basically just so people know, like, hey, this is a hand forged knife. So the next step is going to be doing the profiling. So basically what you want to do at this point is you want to kind of, you know, take a pencil, Sharpie, uh, chalk if you have the white chalk and you basically want to kind of line out where you want your profile to be so this will be your guide so when you go to the grinder you can see kind of where it is you don't have to do this um, it's just if you are a person that's better with a more visual guideline then you want to kind of map out your knife so within this rough profile you want to see the nice profile of your knife and you want to draw that in so that you have something to go to. Once you start making knives and you've done a few knives or if you've already done a few knives, then you can pretty much just wing it. Kind of grind in how you want, make it um, whatever shape you want. So something in particular on this, when I was forging this point down, I didn't hit my corner right first off, so it folded a little. So now I kind of have a decision to make. So I can either take this knife to this point here and then cut this hump off and have it kind of a more of a downward sloping spine or I can cut into the belly of the knife and bring it up here to this point and then it'll be a little bit more of a hunter style like bushcraft knife. I think I'm probably going to go with the first option and make this a little bit more of a dropping point and maybe I might even just flatten this out just slightly and then bring it back to give it a little bit, not really a tanto um, point, but more of kind of a, a drop point, I guess. Uh, but it would be a flat drop point. So that's basically where the knife's at right now. I'm gonna get to profiling, I'm gonna map this out a little bit, and then get to the grinder, all right? All right, guys, here's my knife. So basically what I'm gonna do is just do a really quick kind of profiling where I want to bring this knife to and like I said this can all be done on the fly so you know this is where the real like kind of I guess artistic portion will come into the knife um, and it's part of the fun of making a knife because you can pretty much just do kind of whatever you want, you know, make the knife your own. So one option, like I was saying, I might make this more of a flat tip here and then leave this bit of the spine or I might bring it down to there. So you see the two little pieces I'm looking at there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this flat here give it sort of a kind of a chef knife look almost and then I'll have a little bit of a round belly on this I'm not gonna make it flat um, it'll be more sort of a bushcraft style I guess instead of a flat uh, actually sharp edge so as far as the handle uh, there's not a whole lot on here that I'm gonna mark up I may take a just a tad bit out right here just to kind of make this more of a finger hold and then round this corner a little bit. 
Uh, the spine, I'm not really going to do anything. Um, I just have to take these rough edges out, which is going to be a little bit of material. So this may end up coming down to about there. I'll see once I actually get it grinding. And then I actually want to put just a slight bit of a downward curve here just to make it more comfortable. And then this already has kind of a downward curve. I tried to actually do this on the horn of the anvil. I don't know if you remember from the first video to put a little bit of a curve in there. But I think that's pretty much it for my guidelines. And now I'm going to get on the grinder. Okay, let me show you my setup real quick. Focus! Alright, so here's a real quick view of my setup. This is my Ameribraid 2x72 grinder. I have the table support on there and I'm going to be using an old 60 grit belt that I got from Combat Abrasives. I got my little water quench tank right there. I got my spark band there to catch all the crap. Uh, the speed control. So this is my little setup um, to profile the blade in. Um, I also have a spindle sander over here and I have a uh, disc sander as well that I use sometimes in my little port van. So this part is probably going to be kind of loud. Um, I'll try to either play it in fast forward or uh, dub the sound on the parts where I'm grinding just to give you guys uh, <laughs> so you're not having to turn your volume up and down. All right, let me get set up. All right, guys, um, I guess I need the knife. I know this is going to be cramped and kind of tight. Um, my space is not real huge. All right, so, got the blade here, and I'm going to start doing the profile. So, I pretty much have my blade profiled to where I want. Um, I did a little bit of a slope down on the, on the tip here. I kind of didn't like how it looked, so I, I brought this one, I swept it up a little bit more. But that's my basic blade profile, handle profile. The handle will get a little bit more worked out once I actually put handles on it. And then uh, at this point, you can just grind away because your blade is not hardened yet. So. Um, like you don't have to worry about ruining the temper or you know overheating it or anything like that. It's just as hot as you can stand to hold it, uh, which is why I kept dipping it in the water. You know, when you're doing a lot of material takeaway, the blade gets hot really quick. So I think uh, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna probably do just a little bit of grinding on the bevels, and then uh, maybe a little bit of cleaning up on the handles, just trying to flatten it out a little bit, and then this blade will basically be ready for hardening. You want to get a good solid position against your stomach with your arms. Lock in your elbows. Lock in your elbows. Keep them tight against you and you want to move your body together like this. This will help you get good, consistent grind. And when you switch the other way, you do it the other way. Support with the finger. Control your angle. Whichever way you're doing it.
All right, so when you guys are grinding, <coughs> when you're doing your initial grinds, you basically want to do, you want to cut it in 45. I'm going to move this out here because it's really hot in here. All right, so <clears throat> when you're doing your initial grinding, you want to grind in your 45s is what they call it. So basically what you're doing at this point is, if you look at the profile of your blade along the edge, you want to basically cut in a 45 on either side. And you want to do this down to the point to however thin that you want to take it before you do your heat treat. So a lot of guys will do different thicknesses on their heat treat. Some guys will go down to you know one millimeter, two millimeters. Uh, it also depends maybe on the type of steel that you're using and the type of knife that you're making. But during this process too, you also have to decide if you're going to have plunge lines, if it's going to go, uh, you know, what your edge is going to look like. All of this is stuff that you have to basically make decisions on how it's going to be. Uh, this one is going to have pretty much a very low bevel on it and then a rough raw edge on the spine. So I'm not going to put plunge lines on this knife. I'm going to take the edge, it's going to go all the way up to here and then come across right under my logo. So it's going to be a pretty short edge once the knife is finished. But like I said, the important thing is initial grinding, you're going to put in your 45s first. And then what you'll do later on is when you mark out where you want your actual bevel to be, what you're doing there is you're going to create another facet, you're going to change the angle on your blade, and then what you want to do is you want to get these two lines to meet. So wherever the line is that you draw here on your blade where you want the top of your bevel to be, you want that line to meet with the line on the edge of your blade. And this is still not a finished edge yet. So once this line meets this line, then you're going to have your nice flat bevel. Once you have your flat bevel, then you can take the entire bevel to zero or to the point where you want to do your finish edge. This is, of course, after you do your heat, heat treatment. If you get this edge too thin and you try to do heat treatment, it's going to warp. Here's a perfect example. So hopefully this shows up, but you can see this warp in here. And that's because I ground this edge too thin before I did my heat treat. So when I went to do my quench, the blade just did this thing. So this knife is ruined. If you grind your edge too thin and it warps in the heat treat, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it unless you completely change the shape of your blade and you take that warp out. Um, the way that, that abrasive belts are nowadays, you can get ceramic and get all these other different types of belts. I can heat treat this knife at full thickness and still be able to grind it. And as long as you're constantly dipping your knife, you don't have to worry about ruining the heat treat. So the knives are going to be good if you have decent belts. And that's, that's just something you have to invest in as a knife maker. you got to get decent belts. Um, I mean, if you're doing this with a file, then that's fine. You don't really have to worry about that. Uh, you want to do some of your file work before you harden because obviously filing hardened steel is going to take a really long time. Just like when you're hand sanding hardened steel. It takes a lot longer than when you're sanding you know, mild steel. So that step there. I'm going to clean up the handle just a little bit, like I said, and then this will be ready for heat treatment. All right, for this step, I'm going to flatten up my handles a little bit on the sides. I'm going to use the disc sander for that. A uh, good tool to have is a good magnet, because that will let you hold on to it, put some pressure on there. I'm going to get my mask on. I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do. You know, there's some pretty deep um, camera marks in there, and I was getting to the point where I kind of went onto my blade a little bit here. I don't really want to do that. Um, so now that's going to be exposed. I know this will get scale on it again once I do the heat treat, so it'll probably be fine. Um, 
the handle will just get taken up. Um, you know, when I put epoxy on there, it'll get filled. So it should be good. All right, so another thing that you want to do before we do the hardening is you want to put the holes in for your handle. Um, I know initially in my video I said I was going to punch these hot and it was something that I forgot to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just drill the holes right now. Um, if you want to put any additional holes in your handle for lightening, uh, to lighten up the handle at all, this would be the time to do it as well before you harden it. <clears throat> Not that the handle should get extremely hard, but uh, it's probably going to get harder than it is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do my two initial holes uh, for the handle pins. I'm just doing a quarter inch hole because I'm going to use quarter inch pins on this. Uh, and then I may put in a couple of additional holes. Alright, so I did uh, four quick center punches on here. Metal shavings. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here. Um, so what I did in this video was I did the profiling of my blade, profiling of my handle. Um, I did just a little bit of grinding on the handle to flatten it, just slightly. I mean, it depends on how your steel looks. I had a couple, you know, heavier hammer marks on mine, so I wasn't able to get it totally flat, but it doesn't have to be perfectly flat, you want it to be relatively flat, but the epoxy will take up you know, some of that space when you put your handles on. Um, I did an initial grind here, a little bit on the, uh, the bevels, just did the uh, initial 45 grind. Since the actual bevel of this blade is going to be so short, I'm not going to bother doing any further on that until after we harden the knife. So basically this is uh, going to wrap up part two in this series of uh, beginner blacksmith hand forging a 5160 blade and uh, drilled the holes obviously in the handle I got uh, two pin holes the front and the rear and then I just put in two extra holes for some additional lightning um, and that's going to be about it so um, thanks for watching uh, if you guys have any questions put them in the comments down below uh, if you could subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you could give me a like, I would really appreciate that too. I'm just starting out, so um, any more shares or uh, anything like that that I can get out there to get uh, more followers and subscribers, uh, it will really help. So thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you guys on the next video where we will work on hardening the blade and then doing uh, the final profiling, our final grinding of the bevels and then whatever finishing um, work that I end up doing that will be on the next video. Alright, so thanks guys for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye.